Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. I'm Michael Bain coming to you for Downrange Television and OutdoorChannel.com from the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains. And this week, we have a flurry of UFO reports. And what are these amazing unidentified objects? Well, how about primers? You remember primers, don't you? They're those little brass cups that go in the bottom of cartridge cases that cause the whole thing to go bang. Well, remember we've been reporting here on the video blog that the pipelines have been filling up with Russian ammunition, especially 5.56, 9mm, 40 SW, 45 ACP. Well, apparently those same pipelines are bringing us Russian components. A quick survey of the big reloading sites on the internet this week found large stocks of Russian Wolf primers available in all flavors. And that includes large pistol, small pistol, large rifle, small rifle, and even most of the Magnum primers. This is easily the first time in a year and a half that people have been able to go online and actually buy 5,000 primers in whatever, whatever designation they want. This isn't necessarily an unmixed blessing, especially for competition shooters. Typically a competition gun will have its spring set up so that it's the lightest possible trigger pull, which means that you need the lightest possible primer. Well, the Wolfs are evolved from military primers. They're fairly hard, harder in my experience even than the CCI primers. So for competitive shooters, you're gonna have to maybe tighten up those springs a little bit, back off a little bit on that trigger pull to make sure the primers go bang. But the great thing is, at least you can buy primers again. And I strongly suggest that you pick up 5,000 primers while you have a chance to pick up 5,000 primers. And by the way, on all these wolf cartridges and primers, doesn't that wolf look a lot like a really tame Siberian Husky? It's too early to start buying the champagne and those little pointy party hats, but a lot of companies are looking toward next year, 2011, for the 100th anniversary of John Browning's legendary, amazing 1911 pistol. And nobody more so than that raging pony, Colt, the godfather of the 1911 pistol. Now, as you probably noticed in the last couple of years, Colt is making a major move back into the consumer market. They broadened their line of handguns to include the new 9mm Defender, the shorter slide 1911 style pistol, also the new agent, again a shorter slide pistol, and a whole series of 1911s. Well, now my little cherubs and seraphim tell me that Colt is planning a number of commemorative guns for 2011. And why wouldn't they? One of the most successful products Colt has had in the last couple of years has been their World War I 1918 replica 1911. So expect some excellent commemoratives from Colt. My, my little cherubs tell me it's going to be in different price ranges. So you'll be able to find that commemorative 2011-1911 regardless of what your budget is. My imagination is lit up by guns. I get a little tiny jolt of electricity in my head when I see a gun that interests me. The energy that I get from my imagination propels me to do things I never thought I could do, such as write 14 books. If you do have a champagne budget for 2011, there's one very special 1911 commemorative that you might want to consider. Bill Lawfridge at Cylinder and Slide Shop in Fremont, Nebraska, one of the great master gunsmiths in America, a former consultant for Colt and an expert on the 1911, has decided to build a truly special gun for the 100th anniversary. He and his shop are going to duplicate a 1911-1911. Now, what that means is they're not going to use a, a gun that looks like a 1911 version of the 1911 with all modern parts. Instead, they are going to go back to the original specs, the original drawings, and they're going to recreate those parts, including such small details as that special trigger, uh, the checkering on top of the slide stop, and the little nubby safety. Anything they can do to come very, very close to that exact 1911. 
Now, that kind of quality in a custom gun doesn't come cheap. In all likelihood, the MSRP on the CNS Customs are going to be around $4,000. But again, you're talking about an heirloom gun, a gun as close to a 1911-1911 as you can make it, a gun that if you put it in John Moses Browning's hand, he'd go, yes, this is my gun. In our political news this week, controversy continues to swirl around the United Nations Small Arms Treaty. If you recall, both President Barack Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton have said that the United States will support that treaty, even though their predecessor, George W. Bush, was adamantly against it. According to John Bolton, George Bush's ambassador to the United Nations, the wording of the UN treaty was a direct attack on sovereign American firearms rights. Well, in order to be approved, that treaty has to be ratified by the United States Senate. And for the last few months circulating on the internet, there has been a huge petition urging the Senate to not ratify the treaty when it's presented to them. The specific reason for the petition is, again, an attack on American gun rights. That's been so successful that last week the UN issued a statement that said, hey, we don't really want to seize American guns. I don't know about you, but since the UN says they're not going to seize American guns, I feel a lot better about that. Be sure to visit Downrange TV, www.downrange.tv, and we'll have links for all the things we've talked about here. All right, where's that wascally wabbit? All joking aside, I think most of you are familiar with this great big honking Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum, easily the most powerful handgun on earth. Well, what you may not be familiar with is that author John Ross, now of course he's the author of Unintended Consequences, you've seen him on Shooting Gallery, took it upon himself a couple of years ago to civilize this gun and this cartridge. In fact, he decided that the 500 Magnum may be one of the most useful cartridges ever made if you could just get it out of something like this giant platform. Well, this week, John Ross called us to remind us that some of his special Smith & Wesson Performance Center 500 Magnums are still available. What's the difference between John's guns and this big monster? Well, John turned it into more of an actual carry gun. It's got a 5-inch barrel. It doesn't have this big underlug. It looks a lot like a typical Smith & Wesson revolver. In fact, it's John's concealed carry gun. And, well, what can I say? It's a little harder to conceal than even a 1911. But John's designs, as executed by the Smith & Wesson Performance Center, do make this a lot more of a useful gun. So check out the link to John Ross and see what those guns look like and see if you might want to add your own Velociraptor killer. That about does it for this week. So as always, Downrange TV, www.downrange.tv will have all the links of anything we've mentioned here. Be sure to tune in this week on Shooting Gallery because we have a very special show, one that you guys have been asking for for a long time. We spend the day at the range with author Stephen Hunter. His latest book, I Sniper, right up there on the New York Times bestsellers list. I know you're going to enjoy that. I'm Michael Bain, so until next week, keep your eye out for dinosaurs. We'll see you then. <laughs>